So let's talk just for a minute about drones. More specifically, let's talk about DJI drones. This video is for those of you like me who don't own a drone but want to. I've thought about this long and hard trying to figure out which drone would be the best fit for me and for what I want to do with it. And it's taken a lot of thinking. There's a lot of pros and cons to each drone that you really have to think about. So hopefully this video will help those of you like me decide which drone you should get and which one would be the perfect fit for you. So we're going to talk about three drones from DJI in particular. The Spark, the Mavic Air, and the Mavic Pro. The most recent being the Mavic Air. So, when I was thinking about getting a drone for the first time, and, and what I mean recently, I mean within the last month, I decided that I was going to get a drone. Mainly because I, you know, I'd really like to be able to up the video quality. I'd like to be able to get uh, beautiful drone shots of the city I'm living in. And they just look fun. Plus it also kind of egged me on when I, me and my friend messed around with his drone for a little bit. Take it for a walk. Yep. I need one. <laughs> so one of the important things you need to consider is that every drone, all three of them, have their own pros and cons. No drone is perfect. Each one is going to have a downside to every upside. So the real question is which drone will have more pros than cons to fit your needs? So let's talk about the Spark briefly. Now this is basically as entry level as you could get in filmmaking drones because it is small, it is obviously the cheapest at around $400 I believe. The only downside for me about getting a Spark would be that it only films in 1080p. Now for most people 1080p that's great because that's, the, that's uh, borderline still the standard. But see, for me, this camera films in 4K. So I would want to be able to continue filming in 4K. And for that reason, the Spark would not be for me. But if you're just someone who just, you don't care that much about the resolution of the picture, you just want something that can get up in the air, that's cheap and more affordable, but still has good picture quality, then the Spark may absolutely be for you because it does have really good picture quality even though it's only in 1080p. Now as I stated earlier in the video, this is me trying to figure out which drone to get. So I don't have all these drones to show you examples, but there are plenty of great YouTubers all over YouTube who have gone out, who have done these comparisons, and you can see for yourself, the Spark, while it only does 1080p, uh, some rave about the color, about the color of the video. If you were to put the video of a Spark and the video of a Mavic Pro side by side, the Spark would have a lot more vibrant colors in it. Now if you're a filmmaker, yeah you would want the Pro because in the end what you're most likely going to do is end up color correcting and color grading that footage to end up looking extremely colorful and vibrant and all that. But for those who are just looking for the entry level, who don't really plan on doing all that color correcting, the Spark basically has all that vibrant colors just straight from the footage itself. You don't have to go and do any editing. I don't know why I'm acting like I'm holding the Spark, but for some reason I felt compelled to do so. So, my invisible Spark, ladies and gentlemen. So next, let's talk about the Mavic Pro. We're gonna skip the air real quick and go straight to the Pro for reasons that I promise will be explained in just a second. So the Mavic Pro is kind of the professional standard in terms of the Mavic series right now, hence the Pro. But it doesn't have the best camera now. 
because the best camera belongs to the Mavic Air. I am in love with the Mavic Air. Let me tell you, it's been, I've been thinking about, I've been thinking seriously about getting a drone for about a month now. And right around the time where I decided I was gonna save up for a drone is the exact time that the Mavic Air released. So seeing this new drone come out, right, at basically the exact moment I start considering getting a drone, it seemed a little too good to be true. Like, it's a little cheaper than the Mavic Pro. It has the better camera than the Mavic Pro. And it's even smaller, which makes it better for traveling. And then of course it comes with all the little extra features like the rear sensors to know what's behind it. It comes with the little snapshots such as like the meteorite where it zooms out and it kind of distorts the image to make it look like you're on like a planet. So lots of cool features coming out of the new Mavic Air. And so of course, you know, me thinking, oh, well it's cheaper than the Mavic Pro and it has the better camera why wouldn't I get the Mavic Air? It's, it seems great. To this day, I still really do want a Mavic Air, believe you me. However, there is one big issue that I have with the Mavic Air, and that is that it only uses Wi-Fi, or enhanced Wi-Fi, as they're calling it. So while its range is still pretty good, it does have like a good range, it can go just about two kilometers, I believe. But the issue with an enhanced Wi-Fi signal is that there is a lot of chance for interference. Now, if you live in a more suburban area, kind of outside of a city, um, no tall buildings, you know, just a lot more quaint, no big structures, nothing like that, then you might be good. The Mavic Air would be just fine because the issue here is that a Wi-Fi signal can be distorted. So for me, in my case, I'm living in a city right now, right in the middle or right on the edge of a big city. There is skyscrapers everywhere. There is tons of planes and helicopters flying overhead. Now just for reference really quickly, this is basically my backyard. Not to mention, we're not that far from the airport and the hospital, which has, of course, has their own radio towers to connect with their helicopter whenever the helicopter flies in. So a helicopter flies pretty close to my apartment. Now with all this interference, that is why I'm so against getting the Mavic Air, because I need something with a more reliable signal. I need something like the Mavic Pro that has radio for RC radio frequencies as its connection to the controller instead of just Wi-Fi because it is much more reliable, a lot less to break the connection, and much less chance of interference. And that is what I'm looking for. So that being said, let's talk briefly about the Mavic Pro. So as I said, it doesn't have the best camera anymore. The Mavic Air beats it out on the camera. But what it does beat the Mavic Air in is battery life. The Mavic Pro has almost, give or take, 10 more minutes worth of air time than the Mavic Air does. And secondly, and probably most importantly, the RC radio connection that it uses to keep in contact with the drone and the controller. Because that, that connection is so important for the area that I'm currently living in. So which drone am I going with, you ask? Well, it's been a really tough decision, but I'm not getting either the Mavic Air or the Mavic Pro or the Mavic Spark for that matter. See, because there are, of course, rumors going around, in fact, there are a lot more than rumors that within the next month, today is February 20th, and it is being rumored that sometime in the month of March, they will be announcing the Mavic Pro 2. Two. So I would hate to buy uh, the Mavic Pro or the Mavic Air, the Mavic Pro especially. I would hate to spend that much money right now on the Mavic Pro and in a couple of weeks, 
they announced the Mavic Pro 2. Because I could have just waited a couple more weeks and the next one, the next generation would have been out with all the improvements and enhancements that it has. So that really just seems like the best option for me right now. Yeah, I could go and get the Mavic Air and believe me, I really want to. Knowing that I could order the Mavic Air right now and have it here in like three days maybe and I would be able to fly my drone around and get gorgeous shots, it's, believe me, it is so incredibly tempting. But I want the best, like I said, of both worlds and I think I would be able to get that with the Mavic Pro 2. Now, that being said, the Mavic Pro 2 is technically not confirmed and the specs of it haven't even been revealed until it is announced. But it is basically being said that it will have a one inch sensor in its camera. It will have an improved gimbal. And so let's get, let's, let's think about that for a second. A better camera. So it'll have a better camera than the Mavic Air. So great. An even better camera to start with. But being the Mavic Air, it will also have that RC radio connection uh, between the drone and the controller that I really, really want. Because I would be so terrified of flying my drone around the city area uh, and getting too close to the buildings and then all of a sudden I just lose connection. Like I get it, every drone has its fail safe built in where if it loses connection, it'll fly back to where it took off from. But there have been cases where that didn't quite work out and people just never saw their drones again. Or, or at least it took them a long time to find them and they were broken. And I just do not want to have to worry about that in such, in such a populated area that I'm in. I do not want to have to worry about that. So for me, I'm going with the Mavic Pro 2, assuming that's what it's called when it comes out. I figured if I can just wait another month, see what happens, and it comes out, then that's great. I'll get it, and I'll have the newest uh, Mavic Pro drone, and I'll be, I'll be future-proof for a good while. Like, that thing will last me a while. Now, in the end, if the Mavic Pro 2 isn't released, then maybe I will get the Mavic Air. But right now, there's a lot of rumors circulating about it, and I think that that's the best thing for me, and that's what I'm gonna do. But what are you looking for in a drone? Do you just want something that doesn't do 4K, that's cheap, just something good to start flying a drone around? Or do you want something that would be great for filmmaking, that has that uh, razor sharp resolution and just cinematic uh, picture quality like the Mavic Pro or the Mavic Air. Which one do you think would suit you? That is the real question and that is what I hope all these pros and cons of each drone have kind of helped you decide. Because, I, yeah, like I said, I could get the Mavic Air right now and it would be great, but it always has its cons. If you are in a suburban area, there's not a whole lot of buildings, not a whole lot of chance for interference with the Wi-Fi signal, then you should absolutely get the Mavic Air. It would suit you well and you would love it and you would probably have no issues at all. The only issue for me is I do want the best camera, which the Mavic Air has, but I also really, really need to rely on that better signal to make sure that I do not lose connection because where I am currently located is kind of like no man's land. It's right between the safe area and the restricted flying area because we're like, we are right outside the limit of being too close to the airport. And of course there's a lot of planes and helicopters flying overhead basically all the time. This, there's skyscrapers right outside, so I need to be really careful. I cannot lose connection to that drone for even a second because doing so could honestly possibly be disastrous. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Will you be getting the Spark, the Mavic Air, the Mavic Pro, or will you, like me, be waiting out and hopefully getting the Mavic Pro too? That's what I'm really putting all my cards on, literally putting all my money on, um, I've, I've saved up, so the second they announce that, I mean, I'm, I'm going in. I'm going all in. So I'm so excited for it to hopefully be released in the next few weeks 
I really hope it does. I, I am so excited uh, at the chance of getting uh, the Mavic Pro 2 or just just the newest drone in, like in general. I hope this video has helped you guys uh, get a better grip on which drone you think you should get. Uh, I did my best to kind of uh, to give you the pros and cons of each drone. I hope it helped. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you think there's anything I miss, leave a comment in the comments below. If you like this video, of course, be sure to hit that like button. If you want to see more, be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the alert so you know the second I post a new video. And guys, I will see you in the next video. Peace.